All right, here with Reaction, Hoover Institution Senior Fellow, Victor Davis Hanson, former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee. Governor Huckabee, start with you. Uh, when you look at the situation, what, well, first of all, why didn't he respond to the nearly 200 previous attacks? How could you not respond at all and not have what happened over the weekend become inevitable? Utter weakness. That's what we've seen. Everything that Colonel North just said, I would just want to say amen to it. What else can be said? That was exactly what we need to be doing. I hear some people saying we need to go bomb Iran. Actually, what we need to do is what Donald Trump was doing, and that's bankrupting Iran. That was effective. It was working. And it was a far better approach. Maybe we do need to bomb their refineries, but we don't need to just go after and start another war. We need to do what Donald Trump was already doing, and it was effectively working. I don't know why we don't do it. I'm so tired of hearing Democrats say, boy, isn't it great the Biden team is here? We got the adults back in the room. No, what we got was senior adults in the room that don't know what day it is. For God's sake, we've got to have some people who are looking at this situation with the danger it is. What Colonel North said is exactly the prescription. Maybe Trump gets elected and names him Secretary of Defense. You know what? Uh, Donald Trump also took out Soleimani, Victor Davis Hanson. Um, I don't want America in a long, protracted war. However, we do have new military, sophisticated military technology where we can push a button here in the United States and with pinpoint accuracy hit any, any darn target we want inside of Iran, can't we? Yeah, we can. And that's why Iran, Iran knows that. Generally, uh, in history, if you are perceived that you'll do anything for peace, you're going to guarantee a war. And it's predictable that our response is scripted. We, we say three things. First, we say we're going to uh, respond to the time and place of our choosing. They, that's, they're tired of that. Second, we say while Iran has supplied these surrogates, we don't have any direct evidence that it's Iran. And third, we want to avoid a wider war. That's all nice things, but the message that they take from that is that there's a magic number that we haven't reached yet. They think, is it 50? Is it 100? We'll try 150. Let's try 200 attacks. Is it six dead Americans, eight dead, 50 wounded? And they keep upping it to find out where they have to pull back for a while. But the problem is that deterrence is, Sean, it's really hard to achieve and it's very easy to throw away. And when they came in, Donald Trump killed Soleimani. He took the terrorist. Uh, the Houthis, he put uh, sanctions on them. He cut off Hamas. He didn't want to get into the Iran deal. He rejected it. He put in the sanctions on the oil. He had the Abrams Accord. He had no daylight between us and Israel. And then when, then when he got rid of Soleimani, he didn't have to bomb Iran because they understood no. that they were very in very p deep peril. But when you lose deterrence, then the, finally you're going to get to the point where your only option is a war. And we don't want that. And yet, Ironically and paradoxically, that's exactly where Biden is leading us, to a theater-wide war. The more that he says he wants to prevent it and the more he appeases these people that think they're going to have a magic number until... They're going to keep going until we, they're, they're forced to stop. And we don't want a war, but I don't know... If he doesn't re-enter the Trump prot protocols and the sanctions and all of the terrorist listing, we're going to have a war. And that's unfortunate, but... That's what, it's that's what we'll get down I, to if Biden keeps it up. There's got to be, I, I think you'd agree, and both of you would agree, and I'll ask you an exit question. There's got to be a proportional response here. And to me, I think we're, we're all kind of on the same page. I don't know the, the, maybe the right way to go about it, but we've got to cut off their financing here because the money is financing the proxy wars and the terror attacks all over the globe. Uh, to do that, to me, the surest way to do it would be to take out their refineries. I also think that would be proportional. Mike Huckabee, what do you say? I agree that you can take specific targets. You don't have civilian uh, casualties. You also go after these proxies and hit them hard, hit them real hard. But ultimately, it's bankrupting. Uh, but let them know that if that doesn't work, the bombing will start. But let's pray to God that Victor Davis Hanson is right. The last thing we need or want is an all-out war. I think we can avoid it. Trump well, proved that. I hope we continue that strategy. Would it be wise to take out the refineries, Victor Davis Hanson? If we get to that, we're going to have to. But I think it's much better to be quiet and carry a club than loud with a twig. 
and the louder we are and the more predictable we are, <laughs> the closer we're going to get to war. You should just keep Victor. quiet, and I think he should be disproportionate, disproportionate, and then that will stop it. But uh, he's too loud, and he's too weak, and he's too predictable, and that's dangerous. That's in, the problem. Deterrence. It, and strategy. nobody respects him. And China's going to keep buying Iranian oil anyway, no. but I appreciate you both. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.